Mini episode 1510 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Hello and welcome to FDH Lounge Mini Episode 1510, our review of the big summer hit The Bear on FX and Hulu. I'm FDH Managing Partner Rick Morris here with our top five notes of interest about Season 1. Number five, The Bear is a completely unique and compelling story of a world-class chef who comes home to take over his family's restaurant, the original beef of Chicagoland, in the aftermath of his older brother's suicide. Carmen Carmi Berzato had been aced out of the kitchen by his older brother Mikey a magnetic, charismatic, life-of-the-party character who battled a drug addiction that eventually led to his demise. Carmi had gone high-end, trying to impress his brother, but never getting that validation, working in world-class kitchens and eventually managing the one that was graded the best in the world. He comes home to try to fix the restaurant known simply as Beef, importing another young culinary genius named Sidney to be his lieutenant. This development adds fuel to the fire. As Mikey's best friend and lieutenant, the rebellious and temperamental Richie, who works the front counter, resists the changes that Carmi and Sidney bring to beef. Others in the kitchen, including the set in her ways Tina, resist listening to these young hot shots as well. Carmi's relationship with his sister Natalie is complicated by the way that both of them are dealing with their grief about losing their brother, as well as Natalie's desire for Carmi to stop slumming in a restaurant that is far beneath his skills. Carmi's uncle Cicero, who is mob-connected, lets him know that Mikey borrowed $300,000 from him and that, while he is realistic, he expects Carmi to make efforts to pay it down. The rampant disorganization that Mikey had in place greatly complicates Carmi's efforts to save the restaurant, as well as the trauma that he carries not only from the tragic dynamic with his brother, but the abuse that he suffered en route to becoming a top chef. The season proceeds through a day-by-day effort to rise above these circumstances and to get the restaurant and the people working in it to a better place. Number four. With all due respect to the critics describing the show as a dramedy, it is not. It's a drama. Granted, half-hour dramas are exceedingly rare, and there's a great amount of witty dialogue and the occasional comic relief character and situation, but nothing beyond what you'd find on any dramatic show. The format is among the elements that really help to set the show apart. Number three, people who love shows centered around food will love The Bear, but so will fans of well-written character dramas, inventive cinematography, and programs just oozing with intensity all the time. The push and pull between the characters and how they develop different understandings with each other over time is incredibly written, and the images that flash on the screen at various times that convey the intense thoughts consciously and subconsciously in Carmi's mind, deliver an element that you just won't find on other programs. Number two, the cast is as great as the writing, headlined by Jeremy Allen White of Shameless fame in the lead role of Carmi. The other best-known actors in the cast are Oliver Platt as Uncle Jimmy Cicero and Abby Elliott as Natalie. Other standout performances include Ayo Itaberi as Sidney, and Ivan Masbachrak as Richie. Number one, the layout of season one is truly incredible, with the first six episodes setting the stage for a series of disruptive events in the penultimate show, and the season finale offering resolution with a series of progressively larger shocks. Hints about the Berzato family backstory keep dropping throughout the season, And by the time it's all wrapped up, you feel like you've watched the origin story or maybe almost a prequel for the series that was originally intended. That's an incredibly bold move for a show that has yet to be renewed for season two. But clearly, the creative team knew that they had lightning in a bottle and that it would become one of the biggest critical hits of recent years. 
even if by some unlikelihood this show never comes back, the wire-to-wire -wire story of Season 1 will go down in TV history as something really special. Thank you for joining us for this mini-episode of the FDH Lounge.